Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. I'm your host, Logan Lee Miller. I will say, if you hear any thunder, any lightning, no, I'm just kidding, you can't hear the lightning, but if you're watching on YouTube, you might see little flashes of light. Hopefully, our power does not go out. For some reason, we have been getting all the summer storms. I've been <laughs> loving it, um, but it has like shut off our power once or twice. <laughs> so, um, one thing I will say, it is so annoying to try and reset our microwave. I cannot figure it out. So all week it has just been like a different time. I can reset the oven, but I do not know how to set the microwave again. So that's a little irritating, but one of the days this past week, it literally shook the entire house. Like it was the longest, loudest, biggest boom. Oh my gosh. And it was like around four in the morning. I like woke up. I was like, oh my gosh, like that was a crack of thunder. Um, I love a good summer storm. It's so much fun. Um, I will say my zinnias have taken a beating, a beating. I don't know what is wrong. Maybe our gutters aren't like working quite properly. Um, because or maybe it's the wind or maybe it's just because how they are like how my little flower garden is pressed up against the house but i walked out there and some of them were just like eh, flattened a little bit so i tried to prop them up i'm hopeful that the sun will come and revive them perk them up a little bit but um yeah they're taking a beating i'm thankful for the rain i'm thankful for the thunderstorms i remember I remember thunderstorms and like summer rainstorms being like the best thing ever as a kid going out um, to like any of our little buildings, our barns, our sheds, whatever, listening to the rain come down. It's truly so much fun and it's really just like a peaceful noise and I also love that it washes the sidewalks off. Um, and like the whole world just feels like so clean, so cozy. Um, and speaking of clean, like this is honestly the perfect night. So it's storming outside and my house is spick and span clean. Like it's so, it's chef's, clit, chef's kiss, so clean, so nice. I'm so happy and I'm just ready for like a hot shower. Actually, that's a controversy. Do you shower during a thunderstorm slash lightning? Um, because some people say you're not supposed to shower during a storm. I've never paid that much attention to it. I've always kind of just like taken a shower, but they say you shouldn't do it. But I just want to like take a hot shower, get cozied up in my pajamas and like get ready for bed, maybe read a book, like do all those like just cozy things. I will take full advantage of a summer storm to like light candles, get cozy, maybe bake some cookies, like do those things that are like pre-fall but not fall, right? Like I don't think being cozy should be strictly fall oriented. Like it should be at all times. I love to be cozy. Um, and I, I truly believe you can be cozy in the summertime, right? If you can imagine like laying in a hammock and the sun is all toasty warm, like that's cozy vibes. Or after you just swam all day or been out in the sun and then you come inside and you're like, take a shower and you like cozy up in your sheets because you're just exhausted. Like that's cozy and you can have cozy during the summertime like there's no debate you can have cozy in the summertime so I actually ran to Walmart and I picked up some like transitional scents they're not fall they are not like apple crisp although I don't even like apple crisp um like smells I'm more of like a woodsy kind of smell girl but I got some trends like some transition smells some of them are like more fresh. I always love like an orange smell, but they are definitely preparing for the upcoming season, but they're still like light and crisp, if you will. So I am just 
really enjoying each and every season and just like soaking it in for all that it's worth. Um, but I will be so happy to finally get in bed. It's been a very long week. This weekend has been um, really great, honestly. Like I've enjoyed every single moment. Um, which brings me to our segment of the peaks and the pets. So my peak this week um, was actually having coffee with my mom and my sister. So Lily and my mom, they live in Iowa. And in Iowa, we have, growing up, we did not have a coffee shop. And we like coffee wasn't even really that big of a thing to me growing up in high school. I remember like the creamer being the best part and like always partaking in like a hot cup of coffee with creamer. And iced coffee has definitely like become super, super popular, but like growing up, I didn't have iced coffee often. I remember my mom one time making cold brew coffee and like putting coffee grounds in a huge mason jar and then like we had um condensed milk with it i remember that but that was like at the start of everything kind of like coming right and now i'm addicted i love 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 an iced coffee but growing up like coffee wasn't in the forefront of my mind so i didn't mind that our town did not have its own coffee shop now the town that i grew up in has a very small coffee shop and when I say small coffee shop they're open one day a week and that is on a Saturday so it's not like an everyday thing and this past weekend my sister competed at the Iowa State Fair she had won our county fair queen so the next level was to go to uh, the Iowa State Fair and I like went down, I was so happy to see her. I was a bit stressed, honestly, because I had thought, so Garrett went to Texas this past week on a hunting trip. And so that means I had the entire house to myself. And there was a lot that needed to be done, especially with my sporadic um, trip schedule this, uh, this summer. I've been in and out of the house and I haven't had like proper time to sit down and do a deep clean or declutter or do any of those things that honestly make me really happy and if I'm being quite honest makes me feel like I'm in control of my life when I have all of these things that are like this and that like one thing that will remain consistent for me is cleaning um I I like to clean it helps my mind it's like aesthetically pleasing I love coming home to a clean house it makes it easy there's no decision fatigue take it as you will I like having a clean house and I like having the time to actually do it properly so I I've been cleaning but I've been taking my time right like I had been counterbalancing it with um, doing other things that I love by myself right because Garrett was gone and I like hadn't gotten it like quite perfect yet like it hadn't it wasn't like clean 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 like that feel good in your soul like anybody could stop by and I would be like so proud to show up my house like it wasn't there um it was it was mid at this point and Garrett's like okay like we will be home Sunday around 2 a.m and I was like oh I thought you were coming home Monday like Monday night you're coming home Saturday or Sunday like I was planning to drive up to the Iowa State Fair on Saturday hang out with Lily come back Sunday mosey around, clean what needed to be done, and I was going to have Monday afternoon to also clean because I didn't think Garrett was getting home until like Monday late at night. So this threw a huge wrench in my plans and I was like hustling around trying to get it clean because it's very overwhelming to like not have a house that is like clean when more stuff that is like kind of dirty coming in. Um, maybe this is just, this isn't normal, but this is how my brain works. So like Garrett has all of his clothes that he took on this hunting trip. They're dirty, they're smelly, they're also hunting clothes, okay? That means they have to be washed separately of the rest of the clothes. I'm not going to wash those clothes with my Lululemon leggings. I'm sorry, I'm not. I don't care. 
his hunting clothes might cost more than a pair of my leggings, but like they're not being washed together because my leggings are better than his hunting clothes. I don't care, that, that's the truth. So <laughs> I'm doing the laundry, I get a pick. So in my head, like, okay, I need to have my laundry done. I need to have our regular clothes done in order for his like hunting slash camping. Cause essentially that's what hunting is. You're out in the woods, like you're doing all the things. They need to be separate. On top of that, Garrett had harvested an animal, so that means he's going to have to um, go and process the animal, and he does it himself, so he's going to need our kitchen counter space. He's going to need um, space to work, and so that means it can't have dirty dishes from the night before, so from my grilled cheese that I made or whatever, right? So I'm needing to clean, and then I'm thinking, okay, like, the floors also need their regular like things to do so it needs to be vacuumed it needs to be mopped those are your regular things so I was like oh like this is uh, going to reduce the time I actually have to do um, everything else because I thought I had multiple days like multiple more hours um, and that was significantly reduced and I was like all right so I have these big plans I'm like Saturday morning I'm waking up I have been doing um the journaling like um, before bed on what I'm gonna do the next day I write down three deliverables I'm like this is this is what it's gonna take to be successful and I had big plans if you listen to the Friday episode I wasn't planning to do anything this weekend I went to relax and I was going to save all the stuff that I need to do for like Monday night, right? Or like some Sunday night. I was taking it easy. I was being gentle on myself and this threw a little bit of a hitch in my plans. That's okay. We can adjust. This week is supposed to, <laughs> this week is focused on self care. I have a, a hair appointment scheduled. I have a, I'm getting dry needling done. We'll talk more about that. Um, but this week we're, we're going to focus on self care. So I was like running around trying to get everything cleaned. Um, and then come to find out Rowdy is now on her heat. So I had to go fish out the crate. Um, she prefers being in her crate when she's on her heat. She gets very annoyed by Rooster and she kind of likes, she likes her crate in general as like a den. She's always liked it ever since she was a puppy. Um, it's like her space. She goes and, and like doesn't want anybody to touch her while she's in her crate. So I'm like, all right, I better fish that out. So then she's feeling better. Um, and then I realized that their blankets were absolutely wrecked. Like. They had had them for a while and Rowdy will like chew on her blankets. It's very, very annoying. Rooster, he's lucky to get a blanket because Rowdy usually takes her, his and her blanket. Um, and that's why we had to like take the crate away when she's not like on her heat because she'll try to like stuff all the blankets in her uh, crate. So I like, I threw them out. The blankets, they were disgusting. If you have dogs, you know what I mean. After a while, it's just they're gross <laughs> like so I in my head I was like I need to run to Walmart I'm gonna need to pick up blankets for the dogs and then I was like Ugh, like I don't have time I need to leave by three o'clock to get there in time for the ceremony to start and I was like all right like I had spent the first couple hours editing and then Garrett like called me and he's like yeah I plan home to be home like you know in a couple hours essentially like 20 out or 12 hours or whatever and I was like oh okay and then that threw my entire body into overdrive I was like gotta clean this gotta do this ran to Walmart and I picked up Lily some flowers because I'm so happy and proud of her she deserves flowers um, no matter what the judges decided like she's um, in my eyes the best and I wanted to get her flowers I needed to get the dogs their blankets I also needed to get leather wipes for our couch and then Garrett was coming home 
thinking I had more time, I was like, I'm gonna go and pick up peaches because um, I was planning to can and make peach cobbler, but Gary was not gonna get peach cobbler. He was not gonna get anything. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna get those instant cookies. Like, I'm gonna make some cookies. Um, and I literally spent 10 minutes in Walmart. And if those, all those four things are in different um, departments of the store. So I was like running around trying to get them Everybody and their mother was there and I was like, this is annoying. But I like raced through the store, got my stuff, got out. So the whole trip did not take me that long. Got back home, threw the cookies in the oven, showered, packed my stuff, and I was in the vehicle. And I was like, I am on my way. I'm gonna be there for Lily. That's what's important. Um, and I get to see my mom. So I got there, I rushed. Oh, it was so weird to have like my flowers in my arms and I had like um, wrap them in like some butcher paper because I think that looks better. It's like this brown paper bag um, kind of situation. I think that looks way better than the plastic from Walmart. So I was like, this is this is what it, it's gonna be. I put like a little a bag around the base of it so that I would have some water, and then I put a mason jar. And I'm like running, literally sprinting. Iowa State Fair is huge. I found parking, whipped my truck in there, and I'm like running down the way because I wanted to get there on time. My mother had been saving our seats and she's like, I hope you get here in time because I've got to pee so bad. And I was like, you're right. Like I gotta get there. So I finally get there. I settle in and I watch my little sister walk out, wave to the crowd with all the confidence in the world and sit down. And in that moment, I was just so, so happy and grateful and just really really proud and I was so grateful that I was able to drive there right like that I was able to leave my house hop in a reliable vehicle have money for gas and like be able to come and know like my house is clean know that I don't have any obligations I'm not stressing about okay, my weekend, I spent a lot of it traveling, like now I have to go into work on Monday. I didn't have, I'm, I'm not gonna have any Sunday scaries. I'm not gonna be worried about anything. And I was just really grateful for this moment in my life and how lucky I am, right? And so I'm watching Lily and I'm so happy. And, and then we had a very, very eventful night. Um, if you want to know what happened, you can go check out my YouTube vlog if I get it up in time. But um, we woke up the next morning and I like didn't, I didn't have enough time with them, honestly. And I was just thinking about how quickly time passes on and I I just wanted more time with them, right? Lily and I had planned to do a podcast together. I <laughs> I need to get organized on my podcast equipment for traveling purposes because I forgot the wrong cord or I brought the wrong cord. I forgot the right cord. And uh, I'm like, oh gosh, like we're not going to record a podcast. And, and uh, mom and Lily were going to head home from the hotel and I was like you know what are we going to Starbucks you know I, I love coffee and um, I love spending time with these women right and so we went and we got coffee and I told mom I was like why don't why don't we sit outside and it was kind of misting in Des Moines but the temperature was like perfect and we just sat outside around a table and we just we just talked and in that moment I didn't have anywhere to be I didn't have any obligations I just got to sit and chat with two of my favorite girls in the world and I honestly was I was just grateful because I don't get that all the time we don't have a coffee shop um, in my hometown and we can obviously drink coffee at home, right? But since I live so far away and the fact that Lily is going off to college and life as we know it is going to change for her and 
it's just like these small little moments that mean so much that we get to hang out and we like it's so simple but it's not something that we get to do every day because we don't live down the road from each other we can't just go to a coffee shop and hang out on a sunday and like sometimes when i'm visiting my mom and my dad and my siblings like it's go 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 it's usually an event it's usually something and i was just so grateful for a simple thing right like a simple event and it being kind of spontaneous right like obviously i still had to make a trip there but like the starbucks situation like it wasn't it wasn't required but it was just so good right like that's the best part like we didn't have to sit there we didn't have to get coffee we could have easily just ran into the store grabbed our coffee and i could have said hey i'll, I'll see you in a couple of weeks i love you both right like and i could have hopped in my vehicle and drove away but sitting down and having coffee with someone and talking to someone like that is it's human connection right and and it's love and it's happiness and so that was like my peak like my top peak of the week i got to sit and drink starbucks coffee with my mom and my little sister um if you're wondering our star our starbucks order my mom got americano uh with light cream and then lily this is so funny like i'll order something and then lily's like what are you getting and i'll like tell her what i'm about to order and she's like is it good I'm like i don't know i don't know if you like the same things and she's like usually the things you like i like <laughs> which makes me laugh and it also makes me like really really proud to be an older sister right and so I got a shaken espresso with blonde espresso and um, Lily was like, I'll get that too. And so we had them and, and we just sat and drank and it was, it was perfect. So I will say my pit was leading up to this moment. So we have our coffee and we get into our vehicles. Um, Lily had driven separately to go because she had to be there all week for fair um stuff and my mom had driven up separately and i had driven up separately so we're all three in our different vehicles right i'm like all right i love you see you later have a great drive and in this moment i'm looking in my vehicle for my best friend and my best friend would be my stanley cup <laughs> Um, if you have an emotional connection to your Stanley Cup or any water bottle, you know what I'm talking about. My bestie. The thing that I hold on to. I'm so emotionally attached to her. It's unreasonable. I know it is. But as I looked around my vehicle, I realized I did not have it. And I was immediately pissed. I don't know. <laughs> it was irrational. It was irrational for sure. We have gone through so much, me and the Stanley Cup. I remember the day I ordered her. They, all the colors were sold out. I had been wanting one for so bad. I'd set the alarm on my phone to remind me to order it. It was during a weird time during the day. It was like 10 o'clock and, or 10.30 or something. Stanley was doing their big drop. And I was like, okay, like I'm gonna get a Stanley Cup. I want one so bad. And I remember a customer sat down with me and I was, you know, I had a customer service role at the time. I was doing my job, right? And 30, it was like 30 minutes past the time that I had dropped. I say go back to the customer and then I realized that my alarm had gone off and I needed to make my purchase. So I quickly logged on to the site all the colors I had wanted were gone, and the only thing that was left was a slate gray and then like this black color, black and silver. Um, and I was like, all right, this taupe color it is. Like, I'm going to order it because it's better than black. And I ordered it. Um, it was the most I've ever paid for a water bottle before. And I was just so happy that I at least got one of them. 
soon enough, she came in the mail. I opened her up. I loved her. Loved her so much. And I started drinking water. Which sounds stupid, right? Oh, Logan, you started drinking water. No, like, it's hard to drink water sometimes. And I just knew in that moment, I was like, it's me and you. It's me and you, bud. So I took her every day. Three or four weeks later, I got a promotion. And it, during this time, I was doubting myself. I was petrified. And I just remember how, like, much confidence. This is going to sound dumb. I don't care. But, like, when you feel like you have your aesthetic, when you have your stuff together, and maybe that aesthetic is basic, but what's so wrong with basic, right? Like, basics, basics are necessities. I love a basic black legging. I love a basic tank top. I love being basic. The hair clips, I love them. The trends, I love the basic trends. I don't care. They're cute, that's why they're trending. Stanley cups are trending. I don't care, I wanna be basic. I love it, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. And I just felt, I was like, I have a Stanley, like how cute am I? Like I'm like the girls I look up to on social media, right? And so I felt more confidence. And also it was something fun. It was so dumb and so fun. It's a cup. I get that. It's a cup. When it boils down to it, it's just an item that is shaped in something that is trendy right now. But I have grown up in a pickup truck. My first vehicle was a pickup truck. I had a car for a very, very short time um, and it was stolen out of our driveway and literally lit on fire by someone who was heavily medicated okay I did not know this person they just stole it okay so I've always had a pickup and pickup trucks literally everything flings from side to side actually I'm getting a tickle in my throat right now <coughs> so sorry about that I'm mean, gonna have to drink from my Stanley cup it's cute she's green <laughs> I just spoiled it oh my gosh <laughs> so Sorry about the coughing. Anyways, I, um, I've always had a pickup. Things will fly in a pickup, okay? It's not like a cute mom suburban. It's not a cute car. Things do not, like, have a good spot, okay? And so when the Hydro Flask were really popular, guess what? Mine would fly. Okay, it didn't fit anywhere and it doesn't ride very good in a pickup because the console is just like so wonky and I was so sad and so when the Stanley came out, I was very, very happy about the slender base and it could fit in my pickup and it wasn't going to fly everywhere. I was so happy. So this Stanley Cup went with me to my first like day at a new location in my promotion and I remember walking up to the front door I had all my stuff in my hands and my cup slipped and fell out of my hands skidded across the uh, concrete and had scratched it I just remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, is this like a sign? Is this a sign that this is going to be horrible? Uh, later I found out, yes it was, no, <laughs> but I was just like, so much has gone through with me in this cup and I cannot find it. I don't know where it's at. I spent the night at Rachel's mom and dad's house and I'm hopeful that I left it there, but like as I'm sitting in the vehicle, I shot them a text. They were at the state fair at the time. I said, hey, when you get a chance, would you mind just like looking to see if I left my cup at your house? Um... And in that moment, it was like losing my Apple Watch all over again. Um, if you're a longtime listener, you know that I washed my Apple Watch in the like washing machine, obviously. I could not go like a couple days without it. Um, and at the start of the new year was around the corner. I was like, absolutely not. Like, I need a watch to start the new year with. Like, I've got to have it. 
it was like the same thing. So I immediately searched on my phone, the closest retailer, went to Shields and picked out a brand new Stanley Cup. She's lime green. I have liked her from afar. Like I've seen people post her on social media like this color. And I was like, you know what? I, am, I, I can't go a single day without a Stanley Cup. I went and bought another one. I do feel like I'm cheating on my best friend, but I literally could not go another like minute without a Stanley Cup. I'm hopeful that Rachel, her parents, like it's at the house. I'm I'm, mm, I'm like 98% sure I did not leave it like on the tailgate or something. That would be honestly so, so heartbreaking. But that was my, my pit. Like, I feel like this cup and I have gone through so much. I know it's just a cup, but like every, it hasn't left my side for months, over a year and a half. And I just feel like, I know every scratch, I know every dent, like, because I literally beat it up, and I, I don't know. So I went, I bought another one, because my hydration cannot, you know, cannot slack, need to get my 100 ounces every day, <laughs> um, and so, 120 actually. So I went, I got another Stanley today, it's lime green, she's really, really cute, um, but I'm, I still, I'm holding out for my slate gray um, because it's always good to have two. I probably wash my Stanley like once every three months, um, which is not great. I only put water in it, but like that's still gnarly. Um, sometimes I'll wash my straw, um, but lots of times it has lip gloss in it, which is disgusting. I know, I don't care. Um, I love my Stanley, I hope I find it. That might seem like really surface level, but it broke my heart and I had to shell out another $60 for another one. Um, so I got the lime green. I like it. Hopefully I find my other. If I do find it, that means Garrett can, you know, borrow one every once in a while or I'll just have two. That, I don't know. I, I don't like having a lot of cups though. I feel like that just adds too much clutter to my house. So I liked having the one cup that I used all the time. One coffee cup, one Stanley cup, one water bottle for, you know, like the gym, whatever. I, I like having the single things, but those are my peaks and my pits from this past week. And with this week, Garrett has been gone. I wanna talk a little bit about being alone and your like independence. So Gary and I have been together since I was 18 um, and I like started dating Garrett my second semester of college and honestly like we've been together ever since. So I immediately went from living in a house full of people to living with my dad to then living with Garrett. And there was no point in my life where I was completely on my own. So I think it's really good for me to practice when Garrett is gone, my independence, and to also like lean into that side of me that doesn't get exercised often because I have Garrett to rely on. Whether that's good or bad, I think that's part of a healthy relationship to have some dependence on a partner. If you guys don't have this mutual trust and understanding that, that like the other person will be there for you, then what's the point of being in a relationship in general? So Garrett went on a hunting trip and he essentially at home alone. I have no room to talk. I literally like keep going on these trips all summer long and Garrett has stayed home. He's been a trooper. He's been you know, with our dogs, um, keeping the house together while I've been gone. And it doesn't impact me as much when I'm gone, right? Because usually I'm distracted or there's an event or I'm doing something. Like there's a reason that I have gone on this trip. And so usually I don't have to worry about anything because I'm being entertained. And it's when you are alone and when you are left with your thoughts 
that's where it can kind of get a little scary, right? And you could be overthinking, you can be doubting yourself, um, and it can be, it can get loud, right? And I like to think of like being in like solitude. How often are we just in like perfect quiet? How often do we allow our brains to be bored or to not be like stimulated with not only TV and phones, but also books, music, podcasts, auto, auto books. Like I love all those things. I love learning new things. But sometimes you can read as many books as you want, but the best learning happens from your own experience and it happens from when you allow your thoughts and your brain to work and, and do those good things that it's supposed to do. And so I just like sat there and asked myself like, or really just like propositioned myself as I was setting um, my plans up for the week. I thought, you know, I can either fill my time with a bunch of busy work, I can do this, I can do that, I can try to fill the time, or I can buckle down on my routine, I can do similar things um, to as when Garrett is home, and I can lean into this solidarity and I can practice, you know, being alone with my own thoughts, which is tough. And I, instead of like booking my calendar, which usually I do, I did not. I tried to be gentle on myself. I tried to just be alone with myself. And I had to fight really hard um, with my mind and my thoughts that were running rampant. I will say that I did a good job with not having any sort of panic attack. I did not, um, I did not allow myself to like spiral in that way. I talked myself through it. Um, and I just like reminded myself that I've done this before and that I will be okay. You know, it's really tough. Sometimes my inner dialogue would want to speak back and it would, you know, uh, tell me about my fears and and I knew that that was just my my the oldest part of my brain trying to protect my body right like if you go back to the like caveman part of your brain um, I was just telling myself like hey like this is if you're questioning yourself it's most likely anxiety right or some sort of overthinking and so I just phrased it as you know what like if that happens I'll be okay um, I struggled with going to bed at a proper time I stayed up rather late because I knew that it would help me like just be so exhausted that I could just go to sleep and I didn't have to overthink while I was in bed I could just like close my eyes so I definitely babysat myself with a lot of books and a lot of Gilmore Girls I love Gilmore Girls I think that it's a very soothing show um, and it made me feel safe so I would watch Gilmore Girls and I would hang out and I would sit on the couch and after double checking making sure that the doors were locked and that the dogs were in the hallway I would go into bed and I would pull out my book and I would read for hours I finished so many books this past week I'm talking like five or six books I finished this week and I was staying up until you know like one and two o'clock in the morning which really set me up for an exhausting day um, and I know it's because my cortisol levels were spiked. I knew that I was going to be struggling with this. It's not something that comes easy to me. And I like, I, I just knew that it wasn't, it wasn't going to be perfect, but I knew that I had to try and I knew that I had to also enjoy being alone and try to make it as fun as possible. Um, which is not always easy. I grew up with four other siblings and I like in in my immediate household and 
there was never a dull moment, never a spare time. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm an adult, I don't have children. And like, I talk to the dogs, but, and I think that socialization is so important. And talking to your friends and family and not like being in solitude all the time, um, that's good. Like when you do make the plans and when you do go out, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't have friends or you shouldn't go out or you should stay at home and be like a loner. No, it's more on I was making sure that I wasn't just making these plans to avoid being alone in the house um, or avoid being alone with my thoughts or alone in the way that like I don't have any distractions, right? So I was using it as a way that was, it was good because it's always good to catch up with friends, but I wasn't getting any rest. I wasn't um, having the time, like I don't normally go out every single day of the weekday. Um, I might go out on a Thursday or Tuesday like with a friend or grab coffee or, or do this or that, but like normally I don't go out every single night. I'm not driving. I'm not going to this event or that event. And so I tried to keep it as like normal as possible because I knew that would help regulate my thoughts and emotions and like what I was doing during the day. Um, I also work from home. So I was just like, all right, like this um, can go like you can't run away from it, right? Like I'm, I'm home alone by myself. And so I just embraced it. And this was the best trip yet that Garrett has taken um, because I felt super, super good. And I also was just really, really proud of how far that I've like come um, and being alone and um, allowing myself to, to just be by myself, like that's okay. You're you're allowed to be by yourself and you're allowed to um, also like be a little nervous about it. I, and I think that is completely fine. So um, this past week, I tried to focus on my hobbies and I tried to focus on the things that I normally don't get to do um, because I, I feel like although I do have a amazing sense of individuality and I'm able to go and do things by myself um, during the evening usually like Garrett and I are together we're doing things together like cooking or watching a show or playing with our dogs or going outside and so you want to be amicable you want to agree on things um, so like there's certain movies that I can watch over and over and absolutely love to watch that Garrett necessarily doesn't want to watch, right? Like they could be super, super cheesy movies that he's already seen four times with me and doesn't want to see again, but like I want to see them again. They're those like wholesome, feel good movies or listening to a certain uh, type of music while I cook or like any of those things that when you are completely alone by yourself that you love to do that other people might judge you a little bit for it like I love to take a super long bath and read a book but I feel bad when Garrett is home because I'm like oh like I should be out there talking to him he might be wanting to save a movie or a show for us to enjoy together but here I am like in the um in the bathroom like in a tub right and that's all about like compromise and balance and, and putting your partner's needs before yours. Um, but it's kind of fun when you are by yourself. So although I like had some apprehension about like being by myself, I still was trying to embrace it in the best way possible. I was like, all right, like I get the whole bed to myself. Like I, the mess that I make is the mess that I have to pick up. It's not like I'm doing his laundry too, I'm just doing my laundry. Or if I leave something out, like it's gonna stay out. I don't know, like there's many positives to being alone and also being with somebody. So it was kind of fun. I, like Garrett and I texted and talked every day and he's like, oh, how's your day? And I was like, oh, you know, just 
being a single mom is so hard. You know, with like Rooster and Rowdy, I was just teasing. Um, but soon enough, like he came home and I'm so happy that he's home. Um, but I'm also like, oh, now we're going back to our relationship, right? Like we are um, not watching the cheesy romance movies and we're not having girl dinners, right? <laughs> like it's, it's the perfect balance of um, a good relationship. But there are things that you do by yourself that you don't do with your partner, you don't do with your roommate. And it's not that they're embarrassing or cringy or anything. It's just like you can feel at peace with yourself so you don't have to like um, pretend for anybody else. And so there are there are things that I really like about being by myself, but there are some things that I don't like being by myself. Um, especially talking. Like I love to talk, I love to chat, I love to um, have conversation. And so when Garrett's gone, I'm like, oh, like, who am I supposed to talk to, right? So, um, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and the decision not to like meet with friends or, or do anything like that was really just a question to myself of, do you really want to hang out with them? Would you actually be hanging out with them if Garrett was here? And are you just trying to fill a void or like, will you actually get some like desired outcome from this um, this meeting, right? So I, I made sure to really question if this was like a reoccurring thought, if this was something that I am like running from something else or if it was actually like the truth of it. So, um, but being alone, it's, it's not, it's not easy. It can be difficult. And, I compiled a list of a few things that I like doing while I'm alone. The first one is read books. I told you guys I stayed up super, super late reading books because I felt like it was a, a good escape um, almost, but I was also able to just like relax and immerse myself into someone else's story and I also feel bad when I am reading because I cannot hear anything around me like I am immersed in this book I am reading this book and there's nothing else that will like stop me from consuming this book so um I, I tend to ignore everything around me um I love to watch movies I like to bake oh my gosh so once the like house is perfectly clean I love to like try a new recipe or to bake something but it's not always perfect and I also like to watch a show while I bake I don't know why um, I know I should be like quiet in the kitchen I should be like cracking the eggs and like putting them in the bowl but like I I don't know my um, growing up we watched so shows like in between our house cleaning so like I love to watch shows I love to like pretend I'm in someone else's story I guess I don't know I just it's a very like romantic part of my day to like throw on um, something to watch and make cookies it's that cozy feeling um, it's that happiness it's the ease that just sets in your body um, the next one is go shopping slow I love to go shopping at a snail's pace okay um, this past weekend when I was like rushing around Walmart, that is not how I am usually. I love to just like take it slow and like go down every single aisle and see what's new, see what I like, see what like we haven't gotten our grocery list for a while. Look at the seasonal stuff. Back to school stuff is starting right now. I love to go down the aisles of the school stuff and think, oh, like this is so nice. Like maybe I should redo my office and get some new pens because pens always make everything so much better and um i like to go so slow like i'm talking two hours in a store that might seem obnoxious but like if you're grocery shopping but also like it's a um a mixed store you know like target has um not only food items but also like household items when it's a store of multimedias like i can spend some time in those stores I love putting a podcast in my um, AirPods. I like walking around, 
being in my own world and absolutely not having a time limit. I feel like sometimes when I go with my husband, we're walking down the aisles and he wants to be productive, okay? No, 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 no. When I am shopping, I want to shop and I want to like look at everything. I'm reading labels, I'm testing the fabric, like I'm feeling everything and it is, it's an experience and I absolutely love that part of shopping. So I, I shop slow. I go to other stores and I see what they have and I just like sometimes I'll go to a store and look at something, consider buying it, go to a different store, look at a different item but like similar category and then go back to the first store to purchase it. I don't care. Like I'm taking it slow. I want to see what they got and it makes me really happy. Um, the next one is to organize. I love to organize. I love to also purge things while Garrett is gone because he can't tell me no. I can throw out anything I want. I can reorganize drawers. I can move things around. I can make it how I want it. Very aesthetically pleasing. And it's just like quiet time and space to think, even though sometimes thinking is also a little scary, but it's also really, really good because if you don't allow yourself to have that time to process your thoughts and your emotions, then it can like become this big anthill uh, that you can't get over. So that's also why journaling is so good. Um, but doing these tasks that are are also quieting to the mind are really good too. Um, and then I have laying in a hammock, also reading a book, hanging out. I love to craft and I love to read and I love doing like all those things that just are super, super simplistic, but can like make the biggest impact in your day to day routine. So those are some of the things that I like to do by myself. I also like to take myself out like on a date instead of like just staying at home and trying to whip something together or have a girl dinner or even order takeout and then bring it home there is something so nice about going to a restaurant bonus points if you dress up in something super super cute you take yourself out on a date you bring a journal i've done that so many times where i've like brought a journal or I've brainstormed or I brought my planner and I just like think about the upcoming month and I have this like really good brainstorming session. I just feel so light when I walk away from that supper. I feel so good. I feel so loved, especially when it's like a meal that I absolutely crave and like it, I just try to make it as special as possible um, because when you're taking yourself out on a date you gotta set the standard right like you have to set the bar so I'm always just like trying to go go out with myself right um but yeah being by yourself does not have to be scary it does not have to be like this big ordeal um because one day you might find yourself alone and I rather have my independence than to be so codependent and I don't think like really and truly like I will be fine but it's just and I think it's honestly being a girl like there's just so many more things to worry about as a girl than if you were a boy and so there's just I overthink some things and that is perfectly okay it's all on how you manage it and how you um, work it out in your brain to, to be okay. That self soothing mechanism is so good. I always like, especially like in the hammock, I always try to pretend that I am one of those babies. Um, and like, what is it? Um, not Greenland, Iceland, Newfoundland, Sweden. I don't know. One of those countries, they take, like, they have their strollers and they let their babies nap outside because it's good for their immune system. Um, so they'll, like, put them in their little um, baskets or their roller carts or whatever, and they let them sit outside while they enjoy, like, a coffee inside or whatever. So whenever I'm, like, on the hammock and I'm reading a book or sometimes I'll take a nap on the hammock, I like to like 
calm my mind by saying, you know what, like you're just a little baby. Um, <laughs> sometimes. Um, if I just say, oh, like if the babies in Newfoundland or wherever, Sweden, if they can like sleep outside and be calm, like you can sleep outside and be calm. Or you can rock in this hammock. Like you, it's a very like intimate moment uh, with myself, but I'm like, you're okay. Like take a deep breath. You're going to be fine. Um, but it's like those simple little things that you don't necessarily like think are a big deal, but they actually are like the hugest deal. And it's so good for your mind. It's so good for your mental clarity to actually like sort out the things that have been stressing you out or have that been holding you down. And it's, it's just good mind, body, spirit. It's really good to be alone, to process your thoughts. I used to do the five minute journal. I haven't done it for a very long time. And then I had this journal prompts book that would, it's the daily stoic that would give a journal prompt and then it would have you like think it over. I definitely have been um, needing to go back and start doing the daily stoic because I just like remember going through the book and thinking, oh my gosh, like this is such a good time to think. I also, whenever I am like scrolling on social media or distracted by a movie or something, I tend to have like amnesia with the things that actually need to get done. Like the things that are on my list, I have like a sort of brain fog and it's not until after like I shut down the device, I'm like, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that. And I like procrastinate, I put that off. So that is why I've been doing my journal, um, the before bed with the deliverables, but like just limiting your amount on social media is so good and giving your brain more space to think and be by yourself is also so very good. So I encourage you this week to step out, have some quiet time, have some alone time, some independence time to process your thoughts and your emotions um, because you just gain so much clarity. Like I'm going into this upcoming week feeling so good and feeling so happy um, and really proud of myself and I feel like I've definitely like cultivated some confidence this past week um, and being by myself. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and like if you're on YouTube and give us a rating if you are on one of the many podcast apps. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!